So now let's take a, a little bit of a different approach to the idea of motion. Instead of looking at the algebraic, you know, sort of solving word problems, let's take a look at the um, the graphical way of approaching the the problem of uniform motion and and what kind of information can you get? You know, clearly there are, are sort of two kinds of graphs that we would want to look at. First is the displacement time graph or the distance time graph, and then also the velocity time graph. And so let's start with a simple displacement time graph. And we're going to compare that at the same time to a velocity time graph. So we'll put time down here on the horizontal axis. And then on the vertical axis, we will have x for displacement or v for velocity. Now, that could be a little confusing. I, I do realize, you know, the x-axis is the horizontal axis. But remember, the x-axis is a mathematical way of thinking about these graphs. And we're talking about the physics. In the physics, x represents the displacement or the position of the object. And so for that reason, we're, we're going to be graphing the variable in physics that we call x on the y-axis. That, that can be a little confusing, but I, I think you'll get used to it pretty quickly and uh, recognize when you have um, that x is, is always going to represent for us the uh, displacement or position of the object at some given time. Now, in our case, if you think about the graphs that we're looking at, we want to look at something that provides uniform motion and a graph providing uniform motion means that this graph is going to produce a um, a straight line. Okay, no change. At no point will the line go steeper or more shallow or flatten out or go vertical. It will stay nice and straight. Okay, so what you can see is that for every interval of time, for example, if I choose some interval of time, then what I find is that the position has increased by a certain amount over that time. If I pick that same interval, interval of time, then I will find that the amount that the displacement has changed by is the same as long as I pick the same interval of time. In other words, for example, if I pick two seconds, then the amount of distance that I would travel, if it were 10, uh, 10 meters here, then for two seconds down here, I would have also traveled 10 meters here. So remember, vertically represents the displacement. This would be something in meters or kilometers or centimeters. And on the bottom is the change in time, which would be in seconds, minutes, hours, or some other unit of, of time. A really important thing to recognize about this displacement time graph is that you can obviously tell what the displacement of the object is at any given time. You could also look at the change in displacement. So recognize that this change is delta x and down here is delta t. So I can get the displacement in, at any time. I can get the change in displacement at any time, but more importantly, I can also get another property of the, of the motion of the object by doing a little deeper interpretation. Instead of simply reading off the graph or just looking at changes in the value, I can also calculate the slope of this line. And think about what the slope of this line would represent. I'm sure everyone knows that the slope of a line, in simple terms, is the rise over the run and that would be the change in the y variable over the change in the x variable and again I, I realize it's a little confusing because this actually is the math way of thinking about uh, what x represents. x represents the the horizontal axis but for us if we took the change in the y axis that would be our change in displacement. If we took the change in the horizontal axis, delta x, that would be the change in the time. 
and I'm sure if you don't even need to flip back in your notes to recognize what the change in displacement over the change in time represents of course that represents the velocity so extremely important to recognize that the slope of the line the slope of the line on the displacement time graph is actually the velocity of the object so that's a, that's a little deeper interpretation of a motion graph that we have not seen before and that you may not have done a lot before I'm sure in your math class you've calculated the slopes of lines but you might not have ever thought of the idea that the slope of a line might actually have physical meaning it might mean something in the real world and in this case the slope of this graph represents the velocity of the object the object obviously being in the in the real world now let's translate how this graph looks into what would the velocity time graph look like how would the velocity time graph um, what would its shape be well obviously we're talking about uniform motion that is to say the object is not changing its velocity so because this is a graph of velocity versus time and we just said that our velocity is not going to change what we would be looking at is something that looks more like a horizontal line to repeat the velocity was not changing so an object traveling with constant velocity would have a VT graph, a velocity time graph, that looks like a horizontal line. <coughs> now the slope of this line actually does have meaning also. But we're going to get into that in, the, in a couple of lectures from now when we start talking about acceleration. For right now, we want to look at another property of this graph. So, you know, obviously just like with the displacement time graph, I can read off the values from this graph. I can tell you the velocity at any given time. I could tell you the change in velocity if I calculated the change. In this case, there is no change in the velocity or, or zero change in velocity. Um, but I can actually get the displacement off of this graph. So take a look at this trick. If we sort of imagine putting a dashed line here, and we were to think about the area underneath this line. Uh, what does that area represent? Well, of course, I'm sure everybody knows that the formula for the area, in this case, we have a length times a width. Well, let's take a look at what the length and the width are. So the length, in this case, is the velocity of the object. And the width of this graph is the time. And I'm sure you don't need to look back in your graph to recognize that the length times the, the I'm sorry, velocity times the time would be of you the displacement. So let's sort of summarize real quickly um, what we've gotten from the, the two graphs. And, and again, we're trying to look a little deeper at graphs. We're not just simply reading off the values of displacements or velocities or, or times, but we're trying to go a little bit deeper and look at really two main things that you will do with graphs, and that is to look at the slope of the graph and to look at the area of the graph. Now, in this case, the area of this graph doesn't give us anything. And it's not because of its shape, it's simply because we have no formula so far in which we've multiplied the displacement by the time. We've divided displacement by time, but we've never multiplied the two. So the area of this, mathematically it exists. You can calculate the area of this graph. It does exist. It just doesn't mean anything physically. And that's a tricky thing. Sometimes the area or the slope of a graph means something, and other times it doesn't mean anything. And you really have to look at the equations that you have to try and figure out, does this actually have physical meaning, or is it just essentially giving us some mathematical term that doesn't really mean anything in the real world? One thing I would like to point out is that if this line had been moved up, so let's say we had moved it up to here, I would have had the same velocity. And my calculation of the slope would have been exactly the same. What would have been different is that I would have had a different initial position or initial displacement. So let's draw that. So here's an example where I have an object moving at the same velocity but starting at a different uh, position. This would be x naught. Now here's the trick. 
when I go from this graph, this motion of this object, over here to the velocity time graph, the velocity time graph would not look any different. Remember, over here the velocity was represented by the slope and the slope has not changed. So it's really crucial to recognize that I could draw an infinite number of parallel lines here and they would not change what the velocity time graph looks like whatsoever. That's a, a little bit of a tricky thing is that the velocity time graph can only show you the change in displacement. It cannot show you where you started. It can only show how much you've added to whatever your starting point is. So in a situation like this where you were given a velocity time graph, if you were asked the final displacement, you would have to be told in the text of the problem what was the initial displacement of the object in order to figure out where the object is at. The velocity time graph is, it has limitations in that it can only tell you um, how much you have added to the, to the initial position or initial displacement. So it's a little, you know, a, a bit of a limitation of the velocity time graph. Still very useful, but it, it is a limitation of that, that particular graph. Let's take a look at some um, examples. So we'll look at our first example. And uh, I'm just going to put in some simple numbers so that we can make the calculations and you can sort of see how this looks. So we'll do a velocity time graph for both. We'll put x here. And this will be x in, uh, let's say, meters and time in seconds. and velocity in uh, meters per second. And let's say, for example, that we're going to travel for five seconds. And so if we want to figure out how fast this object was going, we would simply need to, to calculate what it's the slope of the line, and the slope of the line would give us the, the velocity. So in this case, v is equal to delta x over delta t, and that would be equal to, in this case, calculating the slope, it's 20 minus, I'm going to pick that point, and that point to calculate my slope. So I would take 20 minus 0 over, now I look at my uh, horizontal axis, that would be 5 minus 0, and I find that the velocity of this object is 4.0 meters per second. Okay, how does that look on the velocity time graph? Well, on the velocity time graph, we have the same five seconds. So we've determined that the velocity of the object was four meters per second, and that would look like a horizontal line. And what I can get from the velocity time graph is the displacement of that object at five seconds. How far has it traveled? And that would be that delta x is equal to v times t. Or that is to say delta x is equal to four times five seconds, which is 20 meters, exactly what I got from the previous graph over here. I got the same displacement as I did over here. Now just to remind you, this happens to be the final displacement only because my initial starting point was at zero. So when your uh, starting point is zero, then obviously the change in displacement, or just simply the final displacement, would be the same value, 20. If however I had started at a different point, then I would have had to figure out what my final displacement my final displacement was.
um, by simply adding it to the initial starting point.